It was a gorgeous spring day. Earth Day, in fact. And we weren't the only ones anxious to get out of the car and into the woods. Our destination was the Pequot Trail. But we were having trouble finding the Connecticut Forest and Park Association's trademark blue blazes on Coachman Pike in Ledyard. Alright, uh, look on your left somewhere for a trail going into the woods. On the left? I thought it was... We eventually gave up, setting out from the next road crossing on Manning Road. We started by following the blue blazes south, back towards Coachman Pike, to see where we went wrong. One of the problems you run into on a spring hike is that the forest floor is still covered with leaves, so an otherwise well-worn trail may be indistinguishable from the ground on either side. The trail seemed to peter out at someone's backyard, but I was later assured by a CFPA trail manager that it does in fact continue on a narrow right of way between the two houses. We turned around, eventually following a stretch of road where the trail is blazed on telephone poles instead of trees. One of the nicest things about hiking in the spring is seeing wildflowers in bloom. But just down the trail, we ran into one of the biggest downsides. Spring rains and snowmelt can mean high water and soggy trail conditions. But our canine companion didn't seem to mind. This is probably a good time to mention that the bodies of water along a trail can be habitats for all kinds of fish and amphibians, especially in the spring. So try not to let go of the leash. We ran into our next springtime obstacle a little further up the trail. Do you see a blaze on the other side? Does it look like, look like a trail? Every detour was snarled with prickers, so we had trouble getting back on the trail. Sure it was at this point I realized that my map must have fallen out of my pocket. Ten minutes of backtracking, and sure enough, there it was, right on the ground where I had hopped over a gate to re-enter the woods. Maybe we'll find a, a better place to put that this time. <laughs> the trail was ultimately muddy and rocky, punctuated by a good number of fallen trees. Okay, Occasionally, Human and canine disagreed about the best way to get around these obstacles. So a compromise had to be reached. As with most hikes around this part of Connecticut, we eventually started seeing signs of civilization again. This time though, the trail was very clearly marked. We could hear shouting through the woods, which was a little surprising for a Monday morning and we emerged behind a ball field in Preston. The trail then crosses Route 2, but you quickly get away from the sound of traffic, returning to some of the prettiest forest scenery and Ledyard's unique glacial geography. For the last half of the hike, we followed a power line clear cut on and off for about three miles, which is actually not as bad as you might think. Oh, that is a muddy shoe. In all, the trail is 7.6 miles in length, and we probably added at least another mile with our two backtracks. It was the longest hike our canine companion had ever undertaken, but at the end, even he wasn't especially anxious to get back in the car, and seemed like he was ready for more. Fast forward a few hours, however, and somebody was very happy to be home for a nap in a patch of warm sunshine. <laughs>